background. Basically, I've challenged myself to do nothing for 24 hours. It's just miserable. Thank you to Morning Brew for sponsoring this video. So, as you may know, I am an extremely online person. I spend a lot of time on my phone, on my computer, just vibing and being online. And during the pandemic, I found that my general experience has been waking up in the morning and picking up my phone to watch a couple of videos and it's been four hours already. I feel like I have this general experience of pulling out my phone to kill time and just be preoccupied in every moment of my life. Whether it's doing an errand while I'm listening to a podcast or opening Twitter to question whether or not freedom of speech was a good thing because someone has just tweeted some wild <laughs> Anyway, I feel like I'm preoccupied 24 seven and I'm never bored. Like I even find myself falling asleep to episodes of New Girl on Netflix. My question is, am I missing out? Is there anything valuable about boredom? So I've decided to start an experiment. Basically, I've challenged myself to do nothing for 24 hours and see if I get any insights on what it means to be bored, what boredom is, and basically see if there are any insights that I can gain from being bored. Maybe I'll discover some truth about humanity or write the next great American novel, which would be an achievement given I'm not even American. I started by sitting in my room and doing nothing. And well, it was boring. It wasn't very insightful or interesting. It was just nothing. I thought about what I needed to get done in the day and generally about my own life, but Generally, it wasn't very interesting. In the 24 hours, I did have a few pre-approved activities I was allowed to do. This included the usual stuff like eating and going to the bathroom, but I was also allowed to read the terms and conditions of any company that I wanted. I could watch a loading screen from a website Sabrina had set up for me. This page will never load.com if you're interested. I could watch water boil or watch paint dry. Riveting stuff. Um. I don't know if I'm going to put this in the video, but I've decided to stop because it's just miserable and I don't want to do it anymore. And it's my video, so I can do what I like. Who's going to stop me? Mark Zuckerberg? Didn't think so. He's not going to do anything because I'm sitting in my room doing nothing. Turns out, watching someone become increasingly miserable over 24 hours is not a fun video. So I failed. I did about six hours. By about hour four, I was completely miserable and all I wanted to do was stop. Given I was doing this for a video, I forced myself for another couple of hours. And by about hour six, I was completely crushed. It was just so soul sucking to just sit there and do nothing that I just wanted to stop. But I did actually learn something about humanity and that's that we live in a society. I learned nothing. All I learned was being bored made me unhappy and I didn't want to be bored anymore. However, I didn't even feel like I learned what it means to be bored. I definitely didn't find any value in boredom. So I decided to talk to someone who might know a little bit more than me. I decided to talk to someone who studied boredom, who understands it, and will probably be able to give you and me better answers than I could. But before we talk to our expert on boredom, I'd like to thank this video's sponsor, Morning Brew. Morning Brew is a free daily newsletter that gets you up to speed on business and tech news. It's got memes, it's got GIFs, and more importantly, it's well-written. I think it does a great job of bringing business and tech news to me as a normal person in a way that's interesting and relevant to me. And it doesn't take me long to read the newsletter every morning, so I feel like a well-adjusted adult human being who understands what's going on in the world, which is pretty nice because I feel like I spend most of my time just as a confused monkey trying to get through it all. So I've actually been subscribed to Morning Brew since January and one of the things that I've really appreciated about it is how they've been able to contextualize COVID and how business and technology is responding to it. Personally, I felt a lot of uncertainty around COVID and understanding how the world is responding to it has been really clarifying. So if you're interested in tech, business or finance, you can sign up for Morning Brew using the link in our description below. Now, let's get on with the video. So boredom can be unconscious or very, very conscious because uh, boredom is the... This is Maros Finkelstein, an associate professor at the Institute of Sociology in Warsaw. His main focus of study is boredom. How would you define boredom? I would define boredom answering the, the question, yeah, as a negatively perceived state of sense of meaninglessness connected to uh, disengagement from uh, interaction with our environment. 
In boredom studies, boredom is a distinct emotion that's not always associated with idleness or just doing nothing. It's defined as a negatively perceived sense of meaninglessness connected with a disengagement with one's environment. It's the experience of wanting to engage in a satisfying activity, but being unable. So, in our modern society, with so much stuff to occupy our time, from our busy work lives to the immense amount of entertainment at our fingertips, are we less bored than ever before? No, I'm, <laughs> I'm of different opinion. Uh, because all studies and all researches that uh, we have uh, and we can read uh, prove uh, otherwise that uh, boredom is more and more prevalent uh, uh, since two, three centuries. It turns out if we understand boredom as a state of meaninglessness, researchers found that the rise of industrialization and urbanization has led to less satisfying social and work lives, and so feelings of disengagement and meaninglessness have increased in the last few centuries. So, in many ways, we as a society are more bored than ever before. So where does social media and smartphone usage fit into all of this? So. On a shallow level, yeah, these smart devices uh, somehow arrange, manage our, our boredom. But on the more deep level, uh, they only push it away for a time and this boredom accumulate. And then we start to feel uh, a kind of chronic boredom. And I suppose that we can be bored without knowing that we are bored. So we know that something is missing, that uh, something is wrong with the situation, that we are not satisfied, but we don't uh, always use this label boredom. In his book, Peter Tuhi writes about the distinction between situational micro-boredoms and more chronic existential boredoms. Micro-boredoms are the type of boredom that come from a clear cause. Maybe a class or a meeting you're sitting in is really boring, but once you're out of that situation, the boredom is gone. However, existential boredom manifests as a generalized feeling of meaninglessness or lack of purpose that isn't directly connected with an easily identifiable cause. In this way, smartphone games and social media media can act as a bandage in alleviating our situational micro-boredoms, but over time, these escapes from boredom can become an easy way to avoid addressing chronic forms of boredom. I would say that this is similar to the health issues. If you have a minor health issue, yeah, you should deal with this. Yeah, go to the doctor, have an appointment, uh, but if you merely uh, push away your health problems, yeah, they will accumulate. You may uh, realize after some time that uh, you have a bigger problem. And the same thing is with boredom because the, all this stuff in social media, in uh, at our smartphones like games, uh, yeah, these very simple games at our smartphones, we are not fully involved. This is not the place that we can experience the, the opposite of boredom like uh, flow. Flow, or the flow state, a term popularized by psychologist Mikhail... Mi Mikhail... <sighs> Mihai, Chiksent Mihai. And Janae Nakamura describes a state of energized focus in which a person is completely immersed in an activity that is both challenging and rewarding. This state is sometimes described as the zone and is a state of mind that many musicians, athletes and students experience when performing at their best. This state is also known to alleviate stress and anxiety and gives people a sense of fulfillment and satisfaction that's the opposite to the disengagement and dissatisfaction that boredom describes. With boredom being the opposite of meaningful and satisfying activity, is there any value in boredom? Uh, yes, of course. Uh, we can say many negative things about the, the, the mere experience of boredom, but the boredom is not a villain. Uh, the, the way we deal with our boredom is can be a problem. Boredom is a valuable signal that something should be changed, that we should uh, reflect over our life, our experience, this, uh, our involvement in this situation and change something, move on. So this is a valuable signal for change. 
this is a, a regulatory state. Okay, so it turns out that I was doing boredom wrong. Who knew you could even do that? Or at least I was thinking about boredom wrong. Because forcing myself to do all of these meaningless activities was making me miserable. And that was a regulatory signal for me to basically go out and change my environment and do something else. It was literally me telling myself to stop doing what I was doing. And all I was telling myself was continue doing these meaningless tasks that make you miserable. And that's exactly the opposite of the value of boredom. The value of boredom in that situation is the ability to recognize that this isn't meaningful and to go out and find something that isn't boring and is meaningful. I should have stopped reading the terms and conditions when I got bored or stop staring at a website that just loads forever. But I think the really interesting thing that I learned from the conversation that we had was that social media and simple smartphone games and other things that we can do on our smartphones have a way of preoccupying our time without it being meaningful. And that's a form of boredom that we don't really recognize as boredom. And it can make us feel unhappy over time. And that's the state of boredom that I think is the most scary because it's boring and it's meaningless, but it doesn't feel that way. It doesn't feel unpleasant and it can leave us in a state of wasting a lot of time doing nothing and that's kind of scary. I recognize that in myself. I spend too many hours doing things that are basically meaningless but occupy my time in a way that's mildly interesting or entertaining that I continue to do them. Okay, so I don't want to come across as the guy who's just like social media bad. We live in a society with kids these days because I don't believe that. I don't believe that social media is inherently boring and I don't believe that our smartphones are meaningless. I know the value of social media. I know the value of our smartphones and digital technology. It helps us communicate with people that we love and make meaningful connections with them. It helps us keep up with people who live really far away or in different time zones. It helps us learn about the world or different perspectives. And it's also just a great place to consume really meaningful and interesting entertainment. For example, this video. <laughs> Like this video, share, comment, subscribe, da -da -da -da, do all the stuff. But I think what I've learned is that there is a difference between passively scrolling and having a meaningful interaction with your smartphone. I think it's about recognizing passively scrolling as a type of boredom that we might not intuitively notice and try and seek more meaningful connection, whether that's on your smartphone or in real life. I know that I've laughed the hardest I've ever done in my life at some of the videos that I've watched online and I've had the most meaningful conversations with people online. But I also know that I spend a lot of time just passively scrolling, disengaged from what's in front of me. And I think I need to get better at recognizing when I'm doing the latter. Hello, thank you for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. It's been a while since I've been on the channel, so please be nice to me. I've been a bit nervous about coming back. If you like what we do here on the channel, you can support us on Patreon. And if you're not in a position to support us on Patreon right now, you can also subscribe to our newsletter where we provide exclusives and also updates on how everything's going. Anyway, I hope you found this video interesting and peace.